Good evening everyone, it's David Schlothauer here and welcome back to another weather forecast. In today's update, latest global computer models do continue to indicate that there could be more winter storms coming by the very end of this upcoming work week. And then we need to talk about the Arctic air masses that are coming in out of the north because latest models continue to indicate that temperatures could be pretty cold, in fact so cold they could break records. So here's a look at the latest GFS model. This this is the American Global Computer Model looking at the entire United States and this is for Sunday morning and what we have for Sunday morning is a snowstorm moving across the Great Lakes here like Lake Michigan moving across the state of Michigan as well. This is going to be a brief system nothing too big at all maybe about an inch or two of snowfall with that winter storm but yeah it's gonna give you a little bit of a dusting for your Sunday morning and then look what happens by the time we go into Sunday afternoon into the evening hours not much going on up there although we do have a little bit of a chance of rain and some breezy winds with this next system for Louisiana southern Mississippi and this would be for Sunday night into Monday morning. And that's about it. The weather pattern is going to be looking pretty good all the way through Tuesday, through Wednesday, and even perhaps through Thursday, and even maybe, maybe holding off into Friday. So pretty much this entire work week, there's not going to be a whole lot of problems if you're traveling from place to place, if you're going on a road trip looks pretty good for the most part or if you're going to a friend's house for a barbecue looks good too but there are changes coming okay don't get all used to oh it's a good weather pattern setting up here um no the pattern's gonna change by the time we go into the 18th the 19th and the 20th it's been trending like this on our global computer models for a while now for a potential for a big snowstorm coming up for the Midwest, for the Northern Plains, and also for the Northeast. So keep that in mind, all right, after this quiet weather spell that we're about to enter, all right? And it's nice. Once again, I mean, yeah, we could use a break here on the channel, but fortunately, we will be here every day uploading. So make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification icon. So let's move on forward. Yeah, there's our next system that develops here. And it's been consistent on the GFS model, especially for Saturday morning. It's been showing this next system developing with some moderate to heavy rainfall, maybe some severe weather, and then to the north where we do have the chances for some snow and maybe some sleet. And then this pretty much evolves pretty nicely by Saturday afternoon. And this would be day seven. So this would be Saturday afternoon, January the 18th, 2025 here for Pennsylvania, for portions of Michigan and New York State, getting in on the snow and then mainly a rain event across the southeast and also across the deep south. But yeah, it's going to be an impactful weather system because yeah, it's going to be dry for a while and then all of a sudden you're going to have another system coming your way by the time we go into next weekend. Not the weekend that we're in, of course, but the following weekend, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. I should use that as a phrase, right? Then by Sunday, and then by Monday, and then by Martin Luther King Jr. day, looks pretty good, although maybe some lake effect snow showers. More on that in just a second because of that cold Arctic air that is going to be filtering in. Now, what does the European model have to say? Well, again, quiet, dry weather through most and all of this work week, so no issues at all getting from point A to point B. In fact, one could even argue there may not even be a shower at all. So looking good, folks. Thumbs up, 7-up on that. Nice to get a break from all the action, right? But that's not going to last for very long. Just like our GFS model, the European model is also showing something pretty much similar, although lesser snow up here in the Great Lakes and more rain chances down here across the deep south and the southeast. And that goes by pretty quickly. Not a big system. Now look what we have going on on the Euro. Otherwise, this would be for Sunday morning next weekend 
on the 19th of January, we have another winter storm that develops here. And this one could be a little more impactful, as you can see here. This is all the way out to 10 days from now. So there's a lot of variability in the modeling on how it gets handled. The GFS shows a more robust system, whereas the European model has it a lot later. Well, this is a different system, but you, you get the idea. A lot of uncertainty still to be worked out with the global computer models but the euro is being a bit bullish here for tuesday the 21st of january with that chance of light to moderate snowfall not a nor'easter type of deal but yeah just your um un, uh, your typical winter storm that's going to be grazing much of the area that moves through and then we're back into a more quieter weather pattern potentially, but that's not where we end just because it's quiet. These temperature anomalies are straight up serious that we're about to deal with, especially by the latter part of this week coming up into the weekend. That's where we get that winter storm. We get the much colder air coming in out of the north, not just for the eastern half of the US, but also back west too. We're gonna see much colder temperatures with this as this big blast comes in so looking at the temperature anomaly forecast for monday afternoon and you can see all these below average temperature anomalies across much of the midwest and the northern plains but yeah look at that the desert southwest even portions of california will see at least normal temperatures not above average not below average kind of in the middle kind of that pseudo look right that's going to continue for a while because the pattern's not going to change very much. But by the end of next week, the colder air here moves out. Temporary warm-up moves through. And you're probably wondering, oh, a big warm-up, David. Where's this whole cold Arctic air going to come? When is it? Well, wait until you see the um, Saturday and Sunday. Right? So this is a look at Saturday. This is just beyond the seven-day forecast. And I'm not freaking you all out. I'm not trying to get views off this video because a lot of you were saying that in my last video that uh, they, I'm hyping up stuff. I'm not reliable. Please, please have respect because I do this for a living. I'm not doing this to get views, to get subscribers. I'm showing you what I see on the models and what I think is going to happen, right? So this look at January the 18th, below average temperatures are going to be moving in out of the north. We've been seeing this for a while now. If we look at the uh, 0Z last night, it's been showing something really similar. This time, it's even more intense and more bigger than what we saw last night's model run. For California, for the Pacific Northwest, temperatures well below average, possibly 5 to 15 degrees below normal, and then it just gets even colder. Look at this. This is for Sunday next week on the 19th of January. Temperatures as much as 50 degrees below average across the high plains. So this is very, very, very uh, far below average. Record cold temperatures perhaps during the day and night. I'm not surprised by that. And then that's just one blast of cold Arctic air, okay? There's another one after this. This is the 10-day forecast, and you can see the entire United States here is covered in green, blue, and purple. All right, now do I rarely go beyond the 10-day forecast, but because of our signals based on our EPO, the NAO, and the vice versa, all these oscillations, we're going to have another blast of cold air coming in out of the north by the end of January. So I'm pretty concerned about this one. Wait until you see this. This is that next blast that could um, bring, um, could wreak havoc, could bring extreme below average temperatures. Actually, this would be. And look at these temperature, uh, overnight temperatures. This far south, we're seeing single digits even into southern Mississippi. This would be Saturday, the uh, 25th of January. Look at even in uh, the northeast, temperatures as cold as negative 40 at night. That is pretty serious when you think about it. And this cold air just lingers around. Even Florida, look at this. Uh, for the morning hours, Florida could even have temperatures in the low to mid 20s. Therefore, the Weather Prediction Center gives the odds pretty high that temperatures will be below average across the Pacific Northwest. In fact, 
pretty decent here if you're in California. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, I mean, it's better than above average. We will finally feel like winter. By the way, today was close to 70 degrees for our daytime high. By the end of this work week, we'll be down into the low to mid 50s. So yeah, more, more winter January-like, so to speak. Not so much on the spring side of things. I'm not ready for spring or summer yet. None of you are probably ready for it just yet. Guarantee, give it another month, and I think you will be ready for when, uh, for spring, okay? But yeah, this is what it's showing. This is through the 21st of January, and this is through the 25th of January, and you can see what we talked about, this big blast coming in with well below average temperature chances extending across much of the United States here, including out west and even including the eastern seaboard, of the exception of Miami, Florida, always misses out on these blasts, but that could change dramatically. Now your precipitation anomalies are above average, so that's why we could be seeing more big snowstorms. Like I said, by the end of this upcoming work week and beyond, we could be looking at some more snowmageddon storms, and then maybe another big snowstorm maybe for the northeast. We'll see if that actually pans out. Again, very far out, but the chances of above average anomaly precipitation is right around 40 to 60 percent at this time this goes through the next 14 days again similar uh, anomalies across the deep south and the eastern seaboard with above average but unfortunately california will remain very dry i don't see any significant rain or anything with more offshore winds likely for southern california through this period so more high fire danger concerns back west across california now before i do in the video i did want to make a quick announcement if you guys notice my nose i do sound a little nasally some of you did leave comments about that in yesterday's video I am not coming down with a cold. I think it's just really bad allergies because of the strong winds and the low relative humidity combined with some dust blowing up in the air because of these winds and even the warmer temperatures. So that is why I sound a little congested in today's video and in yesterday's video. But believe it or not, I'm fine. Don't worry. I'm not getting sick. Hopefully not, at least, but I'm confident it's just allergies. But otherwise, if you did enjoy the video tonight, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.